So it looks like Nvidia's RTX 50 series GPUs aren't just readily available in stock, but it looks like there's many models that have been going on sale and even dropping below MSRP. Now, if you're in the market for a new GPU because you're building a new rig or you're upgrading from an older card, this could be your time to jump on these deals. But before you hit that checkout button, perhaps you may want to consider if it's worth waiting for the RTX 50 Super Series. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. It's time for one of those market update videos where we look at the current situation in the GPU market. And if you're someone who's looking to purchase a new graphics card for a new build or you're looking to upgrade from an older one, stick around because this one is going to have some valuable information which could help you with your purchasing decision. When it comes to Nvidia's RTX 50 series, a lot of people describe this series as being one of the worst possible launches Nvidia has ever done. And I don't really blame consumers for thinking this way. When the series was rolled out, they were very, very tough to find in stock, especially the RTX 5090. And when they would come into stock, they would be marked up well above MSRP. And I recall just a month after the 5090 and 5080 were officially launched, a lot of AIBs had actually increased pricing even further due to tariffs. For the RTX 5090, when they were in stock, AIB models would be listed for around $2,600, which was, you know, on the cheaper end, and then more premium models would be listed for around $3,000 plus, which is just crazy amounts of money for a gaming graphics card. But as we all know, a lot of these GPUs ended up towards ended up going towards AI farms and researchers, so that's what kept some of that cost inflated. This was also the case for, you know, lower tiered models as well, like the RTX 5080 and 5070 Ti, where the former would be retailing for around $1,100 on the lower end, and then, you know, you'd see premium models for around $1,200 or $1,300. I'd even seen some cards retailing for around $1,600 or $1,700, which was basically what the 4090 used to go for. And the 5070 Ti would be selling for around $900 plus. So pricing wasn't as inflated as it was for the flagship, but still, relative to the MSRP, it was still a hefty markup. You know, combine that with the fact that when the cards were reviewed and compared to their outgoing previous generation cards, performance increases were, you know, rather lackluster. But Nvidia's focus here was to introduce gamers to multi-frame generation and other AI features to make it seem like they were getting a substantial boost in performance because in Nvidia's eyes, you're getting that whole package. It's not just about a raw rasterization increase. It's about getting, you know, multi-frame generation. It's about getting better DLSS and all of that. And while I'm not totally against using these features, especially, you know, DLSS for transformer upscaling, we've seen a number of devs these days relying on them as a crutch during gaming development. And I find that to be pretty annoying. A big example of that recently was Borderlands 4. Listing PC system requirements with those features enabled even when the game looks like it's something out of 2015 just doesn't make sense. But that's more of a topic for a different video. Regardless, even during that whole situation, the GPUs were selling out for the most part, and it actually encouraged Nvidia's partners and you know retailers to keep the prices elevated. Now, when it comes to the more mid-range and budget-oriented graphics cards like the 5070 and 5060, Pricing and availability wasn't really an issue for them, probably because stock was more abundant for them. As you guys know, smaller chips, so there's more yields on a wafer. And also, they were even less appealing compared to the top-end models, so that's why they weren't sought after. I mean, people are still saying they'd feel more comfortable buying a 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM over a 5060 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. So for the 5070 and cards below, that right from the start, you could find them readily available in stock and at MSRP. In fact, for those models, I saw some AIB versions falling below MSRP just a few weeks after they hit store shelves. So that was pretty eye-opening to see. So let's forward to, you know, fall of 2025 today. And what does the market look like currently? Well, if we start off from the top with the RTX 5090, at a first glance, it doesn't seem like the situation has improved a whole lot. If you go on a popular North American retailer like Newegg, you'll see that, you know, available 5090s are starting from around $2,500, which is, you know, still quite a hefty markup compared to MSRP. However, I like to follow sales subreddits like Build a PC Sales and BAPC Sales Canada, which has users posting deals surrounding PC parts. 
And if you're new to this space, I recommend checking those subreddits out regularly as you can find some really, really good deals posted by your fellow PC gamers. And I've seen just this past month, RTX 5090s have been becoming available at MSRP often. Now, you know, let's be realistic here. The 5090 still does have a healthy amount of demand for it, with it being the fastest GPU and all, and along with that being sought after by those AI farms. But at this stage, I wouldn't pay more for one than MSRP. And seeing as to how there's like decent custom models coming in stock at MSRP, like the Asus Tough, and it's not just the FE at Best Buy, then I would patiently just wait and try to snag one of those models. There's just no way I'd be play paying close to $3,000 for one of these cards anymore. But moving down the stack, we have the RTX 5080. And if you're wondering how this GPU performs in, you know, recently released games, then stay tuned because I do have some benchmarks coming up for that as I recently checked out the MSI Expert model, which is a pretty unique graphics card. So I'll have some performance updates for you guys soon. Now, if this is the graphics card that you are eyeing, then you'll be pleased to know that you can find it easily in stock at MSRP. That is an MSRP of $1,000, so it's not cheap. However, I have seen this card also drop below MSRP a few times this past month, and recently dropped down to even $899. And this was the price point that inflated RTX 5070 Ti's were selling for at the start. So if you could snag one at this price point, then yeah, it's a pretty decent deal as you're getting a GPU that trades blows with a 4090 in some instances. And don't worry, I have a video coming about that soon as well, so stay tuned. But speaking of the RTX 5070 Ti, this was the first 50 series GPU that I could get my hands on from the stack. And I said, even at that time when we had the whole inflated pricing, that it provided you with the best bang for your buck out of the entire series, essentially offering you like 4080 or 4080 super levels of performance out of the box. And then when overclocked, you'd essentially be getting pretty close to a stock 5080. And then on top of that, I found that the 5070 Ti didn't draw as much power, but could be f undervolted even further to the point where now my card is only consuming around like 190 watts under a typical gaming workload. And it's also got, you know, 16 gigabytes of VRAM and it has dual NVENC encoders, which is great if you're also going to be using this for video editing and uh, rendering purposes. And now you can find plenty of RTX 5070 Ti selling for MSRP at $750, which just makes that value proposition even better. And if you were wondering if you can get lower than that, well, the card did drop below MSRP to $730, but, you know, not too many people have a micro center close by. And usually Amazon or Newegg is where I'm generally looking at pricing info from. Regardless, if you're looking for a GPU right now and you're not looking for something super high end, but want something that's still capable at 1440p and 4K in some cases, then the 5070 Ti provides you with a lot of really, really good value. Like I always say, don't get obsessed with max or ultra settings. Turn it down to high and you'll still have a great experience and you'll attain great performance. Now, I'm not really going to be bothering to talk about the 5070 or below like the 5060 because... Like I said, those cards weren't that hard to find at launch and at MSRP. And in fact, the 5060 Ti 8GB regularly sells for below MSRP like $330 or $340 because nobody wants to buy an 8GB GPU in 2025. So the next topic I wanted to transition into was the RTX 50 Super Series or the 50 Series Refresh that's rumored to be coming. Now, the information surrounding this refresh, the 50 series, super series or whatever, it seems to be kind of all over the place. Initially, when the rumor started, they stated that the 50 series, 50 super series was coming actually this month or sometime in November. And then that got shifted into CES 2026. And now recently, people are talking about March or April 2026 for a release. So I don't know. And quite frankly, I don't even care that much to begin with, because if we take a look at the rumored specifications, you'll see that there's only three models that NVIDIA is going to be doing a refresh for or introducing a super variant for. That's the 5070 Super, 5070 Ti Super, and 5080 Super. There's going to be no 5090 Super, and there's really no reason for it to happen because the 5090 is the top dog and already comes with a whopping 32 gigabytes of VRAM on a 512-bit bus. So it just doesn't really make much sense for NVIDIA to pour any more resources into that segment. Where are you really going to go from there? The thing already performs at like 500, 600 watts anyways. Whereas with these three GPUs, it primarily looks like it's just a VRAM bump, with the exception being the 5070 Super that has two more SMs over the vanilla 5070. That's it. There's your 50 Super Series 
I know, very, very exciting stuff. But in all honesty, though, while it's nice that there is a considerable VRAM increase, for gaming, I've personally never really had any issues with 16GB graphics cards, even at 4K, aside from a couple of rare exceptions. But like I said, I'm usually dropping down to high settings, and things are totally fine. So VRAM for me personally has never been a problem, aside from FAFOing with 8GB cards in 2025. And sure, you can argue that a 5080 Super with 24GB of VRAM will age better than a 5080 with 16 gigabytes, but by the time 16 gigabytes of VRAM starts to become problematic, the user will probably be looking at upgrading anyways because the GPU cores themselves won't have the adequate processing power. If you're wondering how they're getting to that 24 gigabyte mark, they're basically using three gigabyte chips of GDDR7. They're not changing the memory bus width on the GPUs. But in terms of pricing, I don't really foresee Nvidia to increase prices as they already caught quite a bit of flack uh, for the launch pricing of these cards. But this also ties into whether, you know, the user should wait or not. Like I said, a refresh could be three months away or it could be six months away. Who knows? But that decision will ultimately be up to you. If you can bide your time with what you currently have, then yeah, sure, just wait. But if you need a graphics card right now and you were eyeing something like a 5070 Ti, for sure, just go for it. Like I said, by the time you start having VRAM problems, you'll probably be looking at upgrading the card anyways. And while you might feel remorseful for thinking, oh, had I just waited, I probably could have had a 24 gigabyte graphics card for the same price, then I guess that's your answer right there. You might as well just wait. But in this tech era, there's always something around the corner. By the time the 50 Super Series comes out, you'll have people in the comments saying, oh, don't buy these graphics cards wait for the 60 series and then when those come out there's going to be people saying don't buy these graphics cards wait for the 60 super series like it's just going to be an endless cycle trying to anticipate the next big thing and you're just going to burn yourself out from that and we haven't really seen any concrete uh, evidence whatsoever for the 50 super series launching soon if there was a leaked newegg or amazon listing then that would indicate that it is very, very close, and I would tell you to wait at that point. But we haven't seen anything like that, and I'm fairly confident we're not going to be seeing anything like that in the next couple of months. Performance-wise, it's going to be a couple of percentage points at that, so it's not like you'd be missing out on any hefty performance gains for the same price. But there's my input on the market surrounding NVIDIA GPUs currently, and what I think about the upcoming RTX 50 Super Series. It's Basically a nothing burger at this point, unless you're really, really hell-bent on getting more VRAM because you have other use cases aside from gaming, uh, like workstation use cases. But that's going to be wrapping it up for this one. Hope you all learned something and found this info valuable. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.